Yeah, um, we were, as she said, one of uh, some of the few journalists which made it into the area where there still was, still was uh, some rescue operations going on here in, uh, in the vicinity of Utea. And when we arrived, um, we had we arrived by foot. We just uh, parked the car and headed in there. And we, we just saw people still being dragged out of the water. We saw people um, being taken care of by paramedics on the shore. Uh, there is... Um, uh, there was some, some um, you know, horrific scenes of the young kids, some crying, some shaking, while watching paramedics trying to, to keep their some of the best friends alive. It was uh, some sur- surrealistic scenes and some scenes that uh, no one here in Norway expected to wake up to. Look, I'm sorry that you witnessed that. We're looking at pictures now of the island. You said you drove directly there. Is it actually an island that has a connection to the mainland? No, the, uh, the island does not have a connection to the mainland. The island is, is uh, here in the lake, and it's, um, the island is it's owned by the Norwegian Labour Party and their organisations here in Norway. It's used um, for conventions and the traditional summer camp, which was going on right now with young kids uh, in the youth organization of the Norwegian Labour Party. It's uh, the closest to the shore, it's about, I'd say, 200, 250 meters. Okay. And so, some of the kids even were able to swim over here from the island. I see, I see. So when you say that people were being dragged out of the water, do you mean bodies or people who had tried swimming away from the island? We, we saw people being picked up by boats which have tried to, to swim away from the island. We also been talking to people because what happened here is that the entire local population, they thought they, that there was a, somebody celebrating with fireworks or they had a shooting competition or something was going on. And suddenly they realized what was going on there. And they rushed to the scene from about everywhere. Everyone who had a boat went in there trying to pick up people. Uh, you had people rushing down with blankets. Uh, and, and, uh, and I don't think they were too you know, prepared for the scene they they saw. I mean, they had, they could see, you know, uh, young kids with bullet holes in the forehead and, 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 and they heard stories that which the kids were telling about what they'd experienced. That was truly horrific. Do we know how many children were at the camp and what kind of ages they were? Uh, what we've been told, and I mean, I've been out here all day from, uh, from this morning and what we've been told is that there were around 700 kids in the island. And uh, I, I would guess the ages from the youth organization would be from around 14, 15 to maybe tw- early 20s, most of them being te- teenagers. OK. And do you know whether all the children have been taken off the island now? Has that now been cleared? Yeah, I think so. All the, the, um, the children have been reunited with the relatives who've been gathering at the hotel just uh, some miles from over there. Um, no parents and relatives coming to, I mean, there was literally a traffic chaos going on. Everybody wanted to drive up to get to their, their ones.